on digital and on 88 to 91 FM. BBC Radio 2. Russell Brand. You listen to Russell Brand on Radio 2 with our pre recorded show. Trevor, you look baffled and confused. What is it? I'm just trying to work out what they're named after. The rakes? Yeah. Like probably them rakes, you know, them dandy the... fop characters oh, right, from the yeah. old days. Unlikely to be garden instruments before you start. I, I can see where you're going. You can always recognise the terrain in which Trevor feels most comfortable, is <laughs> not right, it? and he's got a bit of material. It oh, goes got... onto the hose. Ooh, no, you're wrong. Yeah. You're I've wrong. Got a hose. No, you're wrong. The spade. It... No, you're wrong. No, <laughs> there's yeah. a particular... Ooh, no. Yeah, what about this? The saplings? <laughs> no, no, no. Hedge trimmers. There's a fish called the rake. Oh, oh yeah. It's an unusual fish. It's got an unusual power, that fish and all. Do you remember that we tell were, us what it is. Trevor, <laughs> we never ever want to learn of the unusual power of this rake fish. Never, Trevor. We're not interested. Never, Trevor. Never, ever, Trevor. This is an email from Vicky. Now you know that swimming woman that talks to us a lot. Like, what? There's a woman that oh, says yeah, sorry, there's yeah. someone that swims. There's this woman that has old I men thought, yeah, swimming under her when she goes swimming. Character. No, I haven't got that. There's a woman that goes swimming every week, and each week she is tr- plagued by perverts swimming underneath her with swimming goggles, staring up. At her undercarriage, and, she and she's got. She apparently she hates it. No, she rings she us every week to complain about this dilemma. Well, here's a woman called Vicky. She's got a solution, and this is it. I have a solution for the girl wanting people to stop staring at her. Lubricate herself. Ooh. The gleam from the light will shine off and blind onlookers. Plus, if anyone tries to touch her, they'll slip off. She'll be like a fish. Trevor, don't try and tell that story. All slippery and stuff. This is not supposed to sound sexual. I love you guys. Come as my date to the prom, so I won't have to bring a tramp. Where is this person from? Proms. Tramps. tramps. That don't work, because if it's... Emails. A, yeah. It's just, it's just none of it makes sense. Because if you were in America, you'd say bums or hobos. And if you're in England, mm. you ain't going to no proms. That's true. No, oh. actually, the proms. Last night, the proms. She what? When's that on? She what? 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 I bloody well don't <laughs> sod him think so. <laughs> now, so uh, I don't think that advice for the swimming girls That's rubbish. Good. The light won't bounce off. People could still grab you that'd be better if i had the option of uh, glittering kicks yeah. over a swimmer i want one that's gleaming exactly she'll just go faster if she's greased up of course she will that's a ridiculous suggestion vicky what were you thinking and what also what context do you exist in where you have emails and tramps and prompts preposterous we've got someone on this telephone machine now she claims to be in sweden and reckons she's called ellie i think every shred of the information we have about her is dubious Say, hey. ellie are you there I am. What yeah. is this problem for um, our crafting and I am Ellie, item? and I am in Sweden, by the way. What are you doing We trust you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what are you doing um, in Sweden, Ellie? Um, I'm just living here and don't know whether I should be or not. Right. M- leave immediately. <laughs> There's no point living in a country if you're uncertain about it. What led you there in the first place? Um, a guy. <laughs> oh, Joe yeah. was a guy. Why, why did you... Who is this guy? Why did you follow him? Um, I met him in Australia and I fell for him hook, line and sinker and I came and moved over here after he... like two months or something. What did he do that made you want to go and live in Sweden? He just had nice eyes. That's ridiculous. What? Okay. You didn't even talk to him? <laughs> you can't make decisions based on people's eyes. Actually, no. He, he had a bit more going for him than that, but... Yeah. What is it then? You what you like his neck? I mean, it was, did you just scan your eyes up and down his body and tick a series of boxes in your brain and think, "All right, I'll f off to Sweden." <laughs> I'm kind of fed up for London as well, though. All right, London's fair enough. Is he Swedish? Good. Yeah, yeah, he is. But um, he dumped me last year, so um, I'm kind of like I was trying to like swallow my pride and come home, but I haven't actually managed to do that yet. And um, I don't know whether or not I should come back and carry on my photography career. Ellie, it seems to me your problem is insurmountable. I've listened to all the details that there are, and I think that there's nothing at all that can be done. But you've never been to Gothenburg. You don't know. That is where Batman lives. (laughs) I know. It is a terrifying place fraught with crime. I can suggest (laughs) only this. Dress yourself as the creature that you fear most in the world, assuming that that is sexually iconic creature. If you're, fi- if you're afraid of ferrets, don't become a ferret girl, because people will not respect that character. What you want to do is just get out onto the streets of Gothenburg and fight crime wherever you see it. Are you still sleeping with him? Uh, until maybe last week, yeah. <sighs> Why don't you leave Sweden? What are you doing <laughs> to, for money out there? 
<laughs> there, there's no connection between the sleeping with him and money, is there? Not really, no. No, it's free. But um, I work in a coffee factory now. I've started last coffee week. Coffee comes out of a bean. Huh? You've been tricked. <laughs> coffee comes out of a bean, not a factory. <laughs> what are you doing? You're doing an unnecessary job. You might as well have said you live, you're working at a cloud auction. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh, no, I do a good job there, but um, I've only been there a week, so I don't know what the hell I'm doing, and they all speak to me in Swedish, and I'm just, like, nodding and smiling and just being generally nice, but actually not really knowing what the hell's going on. Yeah, this sounds like a terrible situation. And also, you've not even done the thing that you have to do in this time of go, help. I know. Help! Well done. Listen, my love, what was the nature of the advice? You didn't really even ask for any. I was just wanting to know whether you thought I should stick to my guns and stay here or whether I should come back and carry on my amazing photography that career that could... The like... adjectives tell the answer. One of them, you've got guns in Gothenburg, which is illegal as far as I understand. The other one, you've got an amazing photography career. Get back here and take photos. You can right, leave your details. You can come take photos of me, Matt and, Tre- and Trevor just staring inanely at stuff. <laughs> come back right away. OK, we're, we're going <laughs> to we're gonna dedicate a song to you. Oh, thank you. Can you say hello to Trevor because he, I became an electric friend of his not that long ago. That's the only kind of friendship <laughs> Trevor understands. <laughs> he, can't, he can't take actual social friends. Friendships, just the ones that are made up of like neutrons and electrons and the like. <laughs> Hello, Eleanor. Hello. You're right. Yeah. Trevor, why do you know her by he another name? I'm pres- presuming that Ellie is short for Eleanor, and I treat her with a bit more respect than what you do. What other assumptions have you made about this young well, lady? Well, I've got a list Trevor. of them here whilst you've been waffling along. What are these assumptions? <laughs> well, I reckon she lives in a garret situation. She probably can't afford anything better than that. I don't think it's very good, is it? Trevor, don't growl! <laughs> right, we're going to listen to the Sex Pistols and get away from this growling necromancer, Trevor Locke. Ellie, I'm sorry that you had to endure that, my dear. I'll That's come right. back to England, Sweden. I'll take him off my friend list. Hmm? Yeah, get him off your friend He shouldn't be on the... If, yeah, if that's not a list he belongs to. He don't belong on a list, he belongs on a register. <laughs> this isn't the holidays in the sun, this is the Sex Pistols. See you later, Ellie. Get home, dear, come home. There's someone else here who seems to think they need help, called Kieran. Kieran, are you there? I'm here, yep. Yeah. Kieran, could you explain to us what the problem is that you have? Right. Um, we have this pedigree dog, uh, a boxer, and we've been trying to breed him for the last six years, but he's just not interested in the girls. Right. What does he do when he's near him? Uh, nothing. Well, just, they'll just stand there? He just kind of looks at them, you know, you know, even when they're ready for breeding, they just... They just when they're uh, ready for breeding, what, is it, they've they got a lingerie eat. on. <laughs> <laughs> What, 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 so he's, he's indifferent to the charms of a female dog? He's just not interested. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't blame him in many ways, because sometimes, I mean, even the sexiest female dog, to me, is something I could happily overlook. Well, yeah. I mean, we have, we're actually in, in, in the process of breeding at the minute, and we have a... a, a well, dog you must say, you sound very, very relaxed. relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about the dog at the backyard, and she, he's just not, he's not going for it. He's not going... Well, there's a dog in your garden now that if he wanted to, he'd be well oh, within yeah, his rights to have it off she's, with. She's, she's, she's primed and all. She's what? Primed, well, in heat. As they call it. Primed. Primed? Yeah. That, that sounds like a horrible little buzzword, that, doesn't it? We've <laughs> well, primed you know, her right there's, up. There's stages, when they, there's stages when they're ready, you know. Hey, where do you get these dogs for him to have it off with, Kieran? Oh, no, we, we actually we bought this dog for my niece. And, you bought a dog for your niece? That whole thing just sounds <laughs> disgusting. You buy a dog for your niece, then let your dog have it off with it. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of sick <laughs> outfit is it you're running? <laughs> she, uh, basically, I have a boxer and, and my niece... Like the the boxer, so we buy her a dog as well. So we right. buy her a boxer. But on the dog, condition that your dog can have it off with it. <laughs> have you read the Bible? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just it's just not happening. No, well, have a look at the Bible. Matt looks perplexed. What's wrong, Matt? Is it true that dogs don't have sex doggy style? They no, they, they don't. They their leg over and lock each they other. They lock it right. I see this happen the other day. They stand back to back with the man dogs. Well, let's you know. Let's not shy away from calling it his dog's cock. With oh, it, I don't say think it. that's bad. It's like, well, cock's not that bad a word, is it? It's bent round backwards, and they're no. standing back to back. Oh, I didn't think no, it was like no, that. No, no, no. It's that's a, a position. Cold. If you've, you're all wrong. I've seen a documentary. You're doing it all wrong. Yeah, it must have been, must Listen, one of those funny channels late at night or something. Kieran, you may well condemn me, but I'm not the man calling up a radio station <laughs> saying my dog can't get it up. <laughs> right? No, if I ain't got a dog, but if I had one, he'd be out there getting right amongst it. Now, I saw a programme called Dogs in the Womb or something like that, and right. it, was, it, was, <laughs> it was good, it was. It was a bit like Pigs in Space, but a bit more internal, <laughs> right? And there was two dogs. They stood back to back. They stood with their bums touching each yeah. other. And That's the, when they're finished. And the... 
Really? <laughs> That's funny. Finish. Then the 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 boy dog walks inside the gear dog, and he has to turn it turn around to get it it's out. Not country dancing. <laughs> Sounds like strictly dog sex. What you're <laughs> describing there, Kieran. So hold on. So he locks it when he's going to withdraw. He gets on normally. Then he gets locks on normally. Once everything's finished, he kind of turns around. You know, because he's kind of. Embarrassed. He, he's too embarrassed, yeah. <laughs> Who can blame him? Disgusting. He's just had sex with a girl dog. <laughs> it's one of those slip out of bed moments, you know. But Why he, don't you make your dog wear sort of like a little miniature outfit like Phyllis Fogg? And then whether he has sex or not, it'll just be a right laugh. So he's got a top hat on and a little dog cape. Well, someone suggest a Viagra. Mm, don't uh, do that. Might don't kill it. it. Don't might kill it. But apparently they give it to the, apparently they give it to the greyhounds. Make Sorry. Run faster. That's unfair. What? Listen, what kind of what world do you occupy? Will you buy I, dogs I for your niece, that. get your dog to have it off, greyhounds are getting Viagra probably put into their bottoms. I really think, Kieran, you have to think about your, what your career prospects are. Well, so, listen, what's your dog's name? Ben. Go and get him, bring him over here. We'll spur him on a bit. Be a dog whisperer. We'll bring ben, we're, uh, we're dog whisperers! We're dog whisperers! Oh, we're we're Matt now out dog whisperer. Get him in! He's coming on. He's, he's out the back with Rhea. That's, that's the girl dog. Her name's Rhea. Get him. Get well, him. We don't worry about now. Rhea. We'll talk to her later. But yeah. get... What's your dog called again? Ben. Two seconds. Ben. Go, back, go, go and get him, mate. Ways. Right, hold on. Right, Matt, we don't know much about dog whispering. Yes, what we're we going to do, do we? Here, Ben. Bark it. Here, Ben. Look how he talks it. He talks it like it's an accountant. Ben, would you mind? We've got some people here from Radio 2. Ben, stop chatting. We're, we're killing time until Ben gets there. He's so, here. He's here. Here, Ben. Right, put him on the phone. Proof he's there by jabbing him. Jab him till he yelps. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jab him. Don't jab him. We, we right. can't jab him because he's covered in stuff. What? Whoa, he didn't like sex. <laughs> <laughs> ben. No, well, slabbers or something. What slaver? Slabber. Right, slabbers or something. Here, Ben. Here. Christ. There's a guy with a funny hair who wants to talk to you here. <laughs> Don't you criticise me. <laughs> My sex life's in great shape. <laughs> Admittedly, it is with dogs. He doesn't want to talk. Now, right, OK, Ben, make him stand near the phone, yeah, Kieran. Come on, he's here, he's here. He's here. Right. Ben, you need to take a long, hard look at yourself in the mirror, Sam. There's a beautiful dog out there. Her name is Rhea, and she dances in the garden. Get out there and let her have it. Go he's on, son. <laughs> What's he doing? He's licking the phone. Right, see, he's getting turned on. The That's a very you. good sign. He's, he's getting turned on by me. That's interesting. Perhaps could you get this other dog to wear sort of an odd wig and talk in an affected Victorian fashion? Rhea, are you going to wear an odd wig? But Rhea can wear... <laughs> <laughs> oh, talks to them very... <laughs> How come, on the Kieran, level. Kieran, you talk to dogs like they're your fellow man. <laughs> why, why is this? They're, I don't know, they're, they're human, I suppose. Well, I sense. think they're stuffed on wheels. <laughs> Kieran, are these dogs dead that you're talking to? <laughs> Did they die at some time during the 70s <laughs> and you're unable to let it go? No, no, They've no, got no, marbles for eyes. <laughs> have them dogs got marbles for eyes, Kieran? One looking one way, one looking other way. <laughs> Kieran, I reckon we can get them dogs to have it off. I'm really you confident. You can do it. Yeah, of course. All right, let's. Right, we'll meet each of me, Matt, and Trev will have a go at trying to turn them on. Right, right Trev, you have a go at trying to get them dogs yeah, turned turn on. Turn the dogs on, okay, go. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Trevor! Oh, oh, at least Trevor's turned Stop on. It. Stop it. <laughs> Trevor, oh, it's not at the start. Yeah, yeah, well, Trevor didn't even hear what you told him to do. <laughs> 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 Trevor was just doing that anyway on his way back from the lavatory. <laughs> and he used a disabled one, so you're terrible. Oh, That's oh, probably why he's oh. so excited. Matt, go on, you have a go at turning them dogs on. Go on, dogs. <laughs> Please have sex. Yeah, that's going to work. I urge you, Ben and Ria, to bloody well have sex. Are you in Era? Me? No, I'm in the north of Ireland. You're yeah. in the north of Ireland. Get yeah. them dogs. Do it. Do it for your country, you <laughs> bloody dogs. Get amongst it. Do it for love, for peace. Have it off of each other. Ben, your owner, Kieran, has been reduced to ringing us up. So desperate is he for you to have it off. I suppose, Kieran, what you could do is you could try and get him in the mood. Are you a, a married man? Yeah, my, my, my old half sitting here beside me. Right. Why don't you two have it off in front of him and see if that gets him <laughs> in the mood? That's, that's kind of like... Bestiality, isn't that weird or something? No, it's not. It's, no, it's, it's not. only weird it's if normal. you touch them during it. Yeah, I don't or, know. Or are in your mind. If you, <laughs> no, come on. If you imagine that you're them dogs while you're doing it, that's probably a bit weird. But like, I remember when I was a teenager, one of my mates telling me, oh, sometimes when I'm getting off with a girl, oh, I pretend that I'm another girl to spice things up a bit. So perhaps <laughs> if, if you and your wife... Oh, that's weird. It is weird, isn't it? But it's, it, try it. Was that you or was that your mate? <laughs> this is a mate of mine that lives inside my brain <laughs> and comes out when I feel insecure. <laughs> um, so why don't... Right, I, Kim, Kieran, what's your wife's name? Uh, Janet. Can we have a word with her? One second, here, Janet, here. Jan I've met the whole bunch. Janet. 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 
<laughs> Janet! I've sex with Rhea. Janet! That's <laughs> Matt's advice. Matt didn't mean That's that. That's bad timing. <laughs> Janet, what's going on in your house? We're worried about Kieran, we're worried about Ben, we're worried about the whole shebang. You tell me, honest to God, that's the first dog I've ever seen. It'll hump a big large Rottweiler, but he won't go for, for a nice wee kind of... Oh, right. oh, boy dogs, you so see. He that. likes boy dogs, does he? <laughs> he fancies them, yeah. Mm. Definitely. I think that's quite good, because it shows that there's homosexuality in, in animal species. That's good, isn't it? Peter Tatch should be happy about that. <laughs> Especially in Northern Ireland. I've got an idea. Yeah, is it all right there? I hope that the other dogs, he's not facing oppression from the other dogs in the neighbourhood, is he? Oh, well... As long as you don't put it like pink bull on his ground. <laughs> good, good. Right, what I think is, I know what to do. Why don't you get a big butch, like, skinhead mustachio Doberman in your garden, get Ben to have a go on the back of that, and then just at the vital moment, get, gather up an egg cup, get the vital commodity, and then uh, you can just throw that at Rhea. And hopefully, <laughs> six months later, something very beautiful will happen. And that is called a court case <laughs> for interfering in the sexy world of dogs. <laughs> you thought her mad over there. Seriously. How dare you? How dare you? We're trying our best over here to get your dogs at it. Are we on air? <laughs> Not for long. Trevor, come on. How dare you call us mad? You're trying to make a gay dog be a straight dog, and that is absolutely disgusting, I think. With a poor little fella, he has rights, that, that They're that trying chap. to make money out of its sperm, Trevor. Well, that's even worse. I don't think so. He's a gay dog. Let him be gay. He can be gay if he wants, but he's still got to do his job. That's not his job. He had, who told him? Who, 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 he didn't ask to be the, to do there that. There used to be a programme on the telly, didn't there, Matt, called Dogs with Jobs? Yes. Now, Dogs with Jobs. Ben funny. is very lucky to have the job of being a little stud dog, boy, whore dog, and if he wants to get amongst it a bit more. And, like, yes, he can be gay on his own time, but when he's at work, he better be a bit more heterosexual. That's my view. Would you agree with that, Matt? Yes. I was Jan just thinking of them the dogs that used to have a barrel of rum. Yeah, St Bernard. They're for yes. skit. Well, <laughs> why are you thinking about them again? Because I'm trying to make things nice again after all the sex. <laughs> <laughs> Matt thinks about them St Bernard, St. Bernard dogs about nine or ten times a day. Someone's feigning injury in the street in the hope that one of them will come and <laughs> offer him what he reckons is called a nip of brandy or something. <laughs> all right, so listen. Right, Trevor is standing up for the rights of gay dogs, and, okay. that's, and that is good. But uh, I appreciate that that dog's got a job to do, so force him to have sex with girl dogs just with your, your bare hands and possibly with your fingernails. That like, is just fail. Janet! Oh, Janet, you phone us up for advice, we give you advice and then you accuse us of being vile. What kind of topsy-turvy world is it where heroes like we three are cast as villains? It's bonkers. Now, we, Matthew... I've got an idea. Go on. Get the blanket from a male dog's bed, lay it over the female dog's back and then get... Um, what's his name? Andrew. <laughs> the dog? Yeah, I can't remember his name. <laughs> the dog's called Ben. Ben. You don't have dogs called Andrew. <laughs> That's the name of tennis players and princes. <laughs> And then get that Andrew get Ben. Mind you, they do talk to it like it's a bloke, don't I they? Know, that's what I thought it was. <laughs> Could you get Mr. <laughs> Benson, the dog? <laughs> okay. Here and work. Matt's, Matt's planning for this. <laughs> Janet, Matt, Matt's just come up with a brilliant plan. Did you hear it? Yeah. He's put a man dog's knickers on, oh, yeah. <laughs> on the blanket. On the, and also, Rhea is the name of it. Like, get him a dog that's a bit less obviously a tart. Like this dog, Rhea. Oh, Rhea, the yeah, dog. Yeah, that's not right. What if we've got Rhea's listening? Oh, sorry, girls. <laughs> <laughs> I've always sorry. held her in the highest of esteem. <laughs> but I just meant a dog version, a human version. She's classy. But a dog one, I imagine it having earrings on. All right, so, um, yeah, use Matt's plan. And then we'll ring you back in half hour. Put a, Get a man dog's uh, pants, or a, even just a man's pants. Put them on rear, and then just get Ben drunk and shove them in a washing machine together. <clears throat> this oh, is why no. televisions were invented in people's houses. What, so they didn't have to listen to this rubbish? Yeah. <laughs> No, 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 no. Well, people, because I think they're getting entertainment from dogs. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I am. I like it. If I had a couple of dogs, it'd be interesting, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah. Actually, well, I've seen videos with that sort of content, and it was unsettling. Yeah. But then they were doing it with people. Right. Then Very there's, unsettling. Uh, yeah. are, we, are we listening to Brimful of Asher by Corner Shop? It seems that we are. Why not? Fair enough. Uh, listen, Janet, Kieran. Yeah. Uh, Get them dogs at it. We'll ring you up later, see if they've done it. Try Matt's plan. Try all of our plans. Trevor says don't let it be gay if it wants. I say I don't mind it being gay, but it's got to do its job. Matt says... Trick it. Trick it. Trick, Trick it. that dog. <laughs> um, anyway, them dog... Them porn films should never have an animal in them. No, no. let's move on. <laughs>
Yeah, but, it's uh, disturbing. I remember the first time I saw two dogs uh, having it off. With each other? Yeah, it was terrifying. And it was confusing because I was a very little boy. Mm. And I actually didn't realise that's what they were doing. I thought I'd seen a two-headed sheepdog. Trevor, why? Why would we you came round the corner, the in the standing in the middle of the road was what I thought. Doing was it a in the road? They were doing it in the road. It was a Tra- trolley. What kind of life had you had up to that point? When you see two dogs having sex, you, your mind lends itself more easily to the notion of two-headed beasts than sex. They were back to back. They were like, back to back. Yeah. Like, well, like push me, pull you in the. Exactly. The, the, the probably, I've seen, probably seen Doctor Doolittle, and that's that's the only you reference. Probably built your old personality around Doctor Doolittle. Because I'll tell you what, Trevor, when you talk to the humans, it's no fun. I hope that the animals <laughs> are getting something out of it. I really do. <laughs> I really do, Trev. Yeah. Well, any anyway, yeah. Suppose we don't want to talk about like. I was just, I was just going to raise the idea. No. That <laughs> if a, a man like well, there's been that documentary on the telly about a man. <laughs> there's a doctor. I see a documentary the other day. <laughs> I got a problem with my waterworks. My pipes bleeding. Right. I saw a doctor. <laughs> a documentary. <laughs> I don't feel well today. But like, I, I see this that. documentary. Right. And it, a, a man married horse, and they both seem very happy about it. So. What I'm saying is, I suppose... That was Mr. Ed. <laughs> that wasn't a documentary. Trevor, there's a genuine documentary, Men and well, Animals no, seen that. Getting Married. Then, of course, in younger days, there was that film Animal Farm, which made a mockery of George Orwell's novel by simply being <laughs> human beings and animals having it off. Now, I wonder, are there any circumstances where, like, say a dog and a human are in love, should we just go, well, what, what they do in the privacy of their own kennel? When we were in Thailand... Mm. And you had a goldfish that lived in your armpit for about an hour. Do you remember that? A goldfish? A little tiny fish lived in your armpit. Oh, that was amazing. That was beautiful, that. It just swam around with me, didn't it? It stayed under your armpit for ages. We were in the sea. Right. Well, I should mention right. it at that oh, point, okay. yeah. <laughs> we were, me and Matt were in the sea, and this goldfish... I, I, when I thought about that then, I nearly cried. I know. Right. <laughs> and then it went and... But, but we, we, we made thought it. it loved Russell. And then there was a, <laughs> bit, a bit of like, rubbish flow past, and then it stuck to that and went underneath that. It, just, it merely liked shade. <laughs> and it turned out it was just like I was something between it and the glaring sun. But like for a while, it was the happiest it, relationship it, I'd ever had. It was really good, wasn't Especially it? Especially on that holiday. It was the most legitimate <laughs> and decent. <laughs> it was free for a <laughs> Matt Morgan implying we had sex with prostitutes. We, <laughs> we, Jesus Christ, what you get up to with him is up to you. <laughs> Me, it was all very standardised, and it was just fish in a swimming pool. I mean, that big swimming pool, what God made. See, that's the one. <laughs> yeah, I liked that little thing swimming under my arm. I miss him still to this day. I was thinking about going back to find him. Do you think he's still there, Matt? I think he perished. He might have perished in, in that phone. Yeah. <laughs> no thanks, I just had a cup. Oh, come on, cheer up! <laughs> but we talked about that confusion earlier. I'm not just doing that joke on its own, it was postmodern. <laughs> right. <laughs> so there was layers to that. So, hello, Russell, Matt, and I suppose, as he is the subject of this message, Trevor. Oh. Have you ever noticed that, that there's a picture of Trevor on your website where he apparently is wearing a crown? What is going yeah, on? I've Does he that. think he's better than us? Love, Kev. Trevor, do you think you're better than us? Why are you wearing a crown? Well, yes to the first question, and I don't know what you're talking about to the second question. I know question. what it is. There's and a is picture. He wearing a See that oh, thing that, on your microphone? That? Yeah, that, yeah. That thing. It's an optical illusion. Yeah, it's behind his head. It looks like he's wearing a crown. But, mm. You know, from another point of view, it's probably a happy coincidence. However, I did see a website in the week that I think Trevor's made. What is it? It says Trevor, and it's called Trevor Easy on the Eye Lock. Trevor, Trevor, you not got a easy on the eye. Easy on the eye. No, that's not me. That's a, that's a left. That's a hangover from the Lee and Herring show. That was done by David Darlington. That was a who is David Darlington? Just a man, like a man other who man. did a fan site for me, an ironic fan site back in the. Uh, that's the best oh, kind of I'm fan. Glad site you said you. ironic, mate. <laughs> Why do your headphones look like you're wearing an Alice band? None of, no one else's does. The rest of us look all normal and natural. But you look like Lewis Carroll's wet dream. <laughs> you really do. OK, listen, we've got someone on the phone because in a minute Trevor's going to start going on about that website, aren't you? It was made by someone who quite liked you in the old days when you used to be on Lee and Herring's programme. Yeah, and I don't know why he's been looking at it. Why have you been going scouring oh, around for pictures of me it. for... Do you Just scour found the it. Internet? It's diff- no. difficult to find that. I didn't realise it was still up. Mm. It's, oh, actually, I know why. Because I was looking on Wikipedia. Yeah. It was someone keeps changing my thing, going links to Matt's girlfriend, Matt's gay lover, and things like that off my Wikipedia page. Right. I know who it is, actually. Who is it? Some lad. Some lad trying to Some twit. undermine you. Yeah. Oh, your, for a while, your middle name kept changing on Wikipedia. I remember that. said <laughs> Russell Horatio, Horatio. Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I like <laughs> those middle names that I used to have on Wikipedia. Um, all right, then. Who's on the phone with a problem now? Why? It's Ash, of course. Ash, are you all right? Yeah, hi, Russ. 
All right, mate, um, you know that part of this item is you have to go, help, so just sort of explain what your problem is to us and then do a, a, a literal cry for help. What is your problem? Yeah, right, you are. Um, I, got, I sleep talk. <laughs> you sleep talk? I found talk. out in the last sort of um, five years that I talk in my sleep. You're a bit slow to react to this problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you sleep talking now? <laughs> I hope not. No. no. Um, but um, the, um, my girlfriend I was with, she realised that when I sleep talked, I was very, very honest about what, I, what oh, my answers were. Uh oh. What my sleep talking was. And she bypassed she your lying question. brain. What? She bypassed your lying brain by letting you yeah, be asleep. Yeah, exactly. Right, so what and, sort of questions uh, was she asking like you? Questions like, um, you know, um, am I fat? And I used to say yes in my sleep. Which <laughs> what, are you fat honest. or is she fat? <laughs> well. <laughs> Which is an ex-girlfriend, so I suppose I can say she is fat now. You shouldn't just say people are fat because they're ex-girlfriends, you vicious boy. All right, so no, she... no, I love, being, I love her being fat. It was not an insult. Uh, but, um... Do you love her being fat? Well, you got off on Why it. Why didn't she know that she was fat? <laughs> Why did she need to know she was fat in the dead of night? She should have <laughs> no, known I'm that in the day, when there was mirrors and daylight. <laughs> so, OK, so in the dead of night, you're likely to say things that are truthful. Are you in a relationship at the moment, Ash? Well, when she dumped me, it's all the stupid things I said when I was sleep talking. She dumped um, you because of things you did in the dead of night when you were sleeping. That's not fair. It's yeah, not when fair. I was sleep talking, I said, you know, those silly things. And um, it took me like two years to get over it, and now I've got a new girlfriend, and I dread to go, you know, I dread it that I'm going to sadly have to sleep with some predator in case I say something. Uh, honest in my sleep. Well, well, tell us now what honest things you're thinking that might be a problem. Get it off your well, chest, then I it won't be troubling you. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> oh, you idiot. What did you do? He fancies her sister. He fancies his well, girlfriend's well, sister. It's going to come sister, out. I think she's really fanciful, yeah. What's she like? <laughs> You've turned into a robot. <laughs> we can't trust you. You're not. You're a cyborg. That's, I remember he that. is a robot, and it's not sleep talk. It's just he, he dribbles information. Data. Data comes out of him when he's in off mode. Yeah. 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 It is. You are malfunctioning, Ash. Go back to the factory, you lunatic. Right. So oh, you're worried that you're going to really? lose your your cyber prostitute, but as a result of these sleep <laughs> truths, you utter. You're worried that you might say you fancy her sister. That's one of the problems, is I it? I don't fancy her sister, but if she... Yeah, no, I don't, because I'm lying now. Right, hold on, mate. I wish you'd just go to sleep so I could get some bleeding honesty <laughs> out of you. Because listening to this rhubarb now, it's difficult to decipher, isn't it, Matt? It's a bit like oh, that Cher yeah. song. So, well, yeah, I can't break through. You sound like when Cher goes, I can't break through. <laughs> Sounds like when Cher was gargling water. I used to like doing that. And I feel... That used to make me happy. Go? Doing that, it goes, uh, uh, do you believe in life That's after it. love? Mm. It's, oh, here we go. <laughs> like that, isn't it? That is not it. Hold on, yes, it is. It goes like this. <laughs> go on, you do it then. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We've solved this problem now. <laughs> what you needed to do all along, Ash, was simply a series of uh, share impressions. Do that. Do I've Brilliant. got you, babe. Do it's in his kiss. But whatever you do, do not fall asleep in, in front of this woman whose sister you're desperate to have it off with at any cost. OK, Russell, you're a genius. Thank Brilliant. you very much for that compliment okay. and thank you for your problem. Do you, um, you've be, we've thank helped you. Thank you very him. much. I will do what you say. You must do these things, Ash. For God's sake, don't of sleep. I will. I adore you, I'm, uh, and look. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Who <laughs> you consider to be a private in your own personal <laughs> army. Take care, Ash. Thank you for your call. God bless you. Off he goes. He Bye. was a good spirit. Like, well, he sounded like he was in the middle of a riot, didn't he? He did a bit. And he was a robot. He was a robot. I'm nervous about that, Matt, because if robots can just get in touch with us whenever they want, there's no telling what they'll do next. <laughs> I'm scared of those robot guys. I think we're robots. We're not robots, Trev. I think we are. I think what? we're special flesh robots that have been invented in the future by really clever people, and actually this flesh in biology is a robot. How come we're here now, then, if we're not invented till the future? What because they've gone theory. back in the past and to, to invent us, haven't they? Well, then we was invented in the past. I understand the plot of Back to the Future. It just goes round and round and round, doesn't it? That's the point. What time is this petrol, is what, not um, linear? It, um, it describes, uh, sorry, it explains Trevor's dress. Yeah, it Doesn't does. Let me explain. And look, I've had a lot of compliments from my dress. Every time you slag my dress off. Anachronistic dress. It's not a dress. Send it back. <laughs> <laughs>
This is what they wore then, I think. <laughs> I believe that in 1962, people wore ridiculous pastel-coloured dog blankets to wipe. <laughs> and then look at Trevor turning up here, looking all ludicrous. Okay, uh, Trev, yeah, so, okay, we are in a way biological robots, I suppose. Exactly. So that is one perspective one exactly. could take. But I don't know who these sentient beings who designed us are meant to be. Have you got what? an answer for that? Us in the future, just, just better versions of us in the future. Us in the future? Yeah. I'll tell you what, if I was in the future, and I goes, shall I invent, do you want to invent someone? The last twerp I'd invent would be a person like you. Yeah, but you'd need drones. That's right, no, oh, actually, yeah. <laughs> We'd need drones to do the work, I suppose. Um, we met him, that boy George, once, and I asked him what Karma Chameleon meant, and he said he didn't know. Really? <laughs> yeah. Said he didn't know what it meant. I tried to get him to explain it. He probably couldn't be bothered to explain yeah, it. Yeah, why would he bother? He well, it's obvious, isn't it? Karma Chameleon. Well, yeah. Why well, is that obvious? obvious? Karma is a sort of uh, moral concept and a chameleon is a little lizard. Yeah, but it's like yeah. social chameleon, karma chameleon. Maybe yeah, you... How can you adjust you yourself what? to match it? I'm with boy George, I don't know what it means. Yeah, you <laughs> certainly are, mate. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised to see you picking up little of a shaved head <laughs> <laughs> within the hour. Here's someone wanting some help. It's She's called Wing K, a.k.a. Sophie. She goes, Dear Trev, Matt and Russell, like the subject, I've... What? I've got a mouse in my house. I was watching TV and suddenly a mouse runs through my living room. Oh, wait, she's using tenses in a peculiar fashion as well, like a footballer. I used to think that I weren't afraid of mouses. Look at how she speaks. But within a moment, I was screaming and jumping on the couch. The little thing has been missing since. I don't know where it is and now I don't know what to do. Help, full stop. I don't want to kill it, although my dad bought poison, full stop. What can I do to prevent this from having a dying animal in my house. So do you have any tips and tricks to catch it without harming and coming two feet near it? Hmm. Sadly, I live abroad. Ah, she's foreign. So I can't talk over the phone. Hopefully you guys will help. Okay, fine. Oh, maybe Trevor can portrait me on the radio. Use your imagination, lad. Well, it's probably best that I read it because I don't know what Trevor's interpretation of that would have been. He probably would have done it as a dance. So this lady's a got mouse. a mouse in her house. It is a bit scary if some animal turns up in your house because it, some sort of primal sense of invasion occurs, even well, though it's When you had a mouse. rat under your floorboard. Yeah, it freaked us out a bit, didn't it? it started going... <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny little guy, weren't he? I we think it was the... a rat. Something was going on. It's either a rat or <laughs> some <laughs> trussed up unfortunates. <laughs> we let the cat go down now. I lifted up the floorboards, let the cat go down under the floorboards for a while. He stayed there longer than I thought he should have done. Then he came up looking like a miner. <laughs> 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 All baffled, like he had a dirty <laughs> secret to share. Um, I don't know what to do about this mouse that uh, Wink, aka Sophie, has got in her house. What do you suggest, Matt? You're always a man with a solution. Um, I would. So there's been poison put down. The dad's bought the poison. I don't know if it the poison's been put been down. Don't put it down. Yeah. Just, it might have just been passing through. Just passing through. What it country is she in? She doesn't even say a what country. country where they don't in. have telephones, apparently. Yeah. A country where there's... It may, you know, maybe, maybe it's the dead of night. If you're in the country, the that just means a mouse is a field mouse running around. And you can't kill a dormouse because they're a protected species. It, it won't be a dormouse. Dorm it won't be a dormouse. Why won't it be a dormouse? Why you don't know about mice? I know about mice. What do you know about? You smash their brains in from your childhood. I remember we had to talk about that week after week for therapy. I was an amateur naturalist and I know that the dormouse is a very sleepy mouse and it's only active for about three months Trevor, I've seen you nude and yes, you are an amateur. So, okay. So, what we should do about this girl's got a mouse in her house she doesn't want to kill it just get one of them humane traps and then get a little tiny get bejeweled a friend's waistcoat cat. friend's cat and to scare it out of the house yeah all right yeah get a friend's cat and but still do the <laughs> waistcoat bit because i was looking forward to that <laughs> seeing it all in a little bejeweled waistcoat or and get little those... mouse shoes yeah, what, Matthew? Kind traps. You can get a humane a trap. kind trap. I'm going to trap you in a big cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> what a terrible way for anyone to die. So, uh, who have we got to talk to now? Lindsay's on the phone. She's got a terrible problem. Lindsay, are you there, dear? Yes, I am. Lindsay, you sound quite severe. What is the nature of your dilemma? The nature of my dilemma is um, I am in a quote-unquote relationship with um, someone who is living in London and given that I'm living in Glasgow it's kind of quite strained at times. Must be strained. Yeah it is but I mean you know you get by mm. such as life um, but I've recently come into some information and um, that he Dirty actually... devil! <laughs> <laughs> That'll make it confusing to understand but go on you've, you've come by some info. Dirty. Come by some info that um, told me that he was on a speed dating night 
<gasps> Speed uh, dating, the lowest yeah. of the dating formulas. <laughs> I, I went Indeed. there once. <laughs> well, exactly, Matt, yeah. Matt went there, right. <laughs> For the radio Engineered show. it into looking like a radio show when essentially it was a single man rampaging around a room, frightening people. <laughs> no, I was very adept at that. Chatting up barmaids, all sorts of Appalled victims the there were to that evening. Christ, poor lad. So, OK, so your boyfriend has been committing what's known down here as a Matt Morgan, going speed dating. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And All right, I, what's um, the result? Uh, well, I accidentally went onto the speed dating website. And Why are you accident- accidentally going on speed? <laughs> I fell onto it. I fell onto it and I fell into his account and I found messages How did you that know? Um, are from between him and this girl arranging right. a date. Okay. So I called him up about it and confronted him and he said that, he said, well, initially he denied it, and then he said, um, Oh, God. No, no, I was going on a date with, um, because my friend... He went, no, no, <laughs> like yeah, he was no, about yeah. to sing, <laughs> no, <laughs> to unlimited song, no, no, no limit, no no no. no, 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 speed dating, no, no. <laughs> OK, that's, that's a terrible way to try and get out of this predicament, Indeed. Lindsay. And then what, you kept putting on the pressure... Yeah, I, I said, well, I don't believe him, and he said that he was going on the date as part of a foursome because his friend liked her friend, worse. and it was completely platonic. <laughs> and I Plato, said, you know what he I was don't into. know whether to believe him. <laughs> bumming and philosophy, but yep. bumming and all. So, OK, so saying something's platonic, that's no help in my view, right? No. So, OK, so in a way, you're bad for snooping. If I was him, I'd be using the old you shouldn't have been snooping defence <laughs> and well, clinging on to that as desperately as I could, <laughs> in spite of the fact that you're snooping and uncovered a terrible crime. So, okay, so what? So you, you through your, well, that's, you know, there's not a shy away from the word, psychopathic stalking and snooping, you've discovered that he's been unfaithful. Now yeah. we've got, now what do you want us to do? Well, I kind of might have the girl's phone number. Christ, where did you get it? It's on the freaking site. Don't swear. <laughs> I didn't swear. All right. Good. <laughs> now, uh, in that case, you're a bloody hero, young lady. <laughs> you just swore. Oh, Christ. So what, anyone can get her number then? It's just up there on the website. No, she Trevor, said... not your, we don't want you getting involved Stop in this. Stop it. I was oh, just no, in your that. chair and eat your fruit. <laughs> He's sat there like that monkey out of Jungle Book, guzzling fruit, oh, no, trying to understand man's red fire. You just keep still. So yeah. she's got her boyfriend's email. She can get into his emails. She's no, not his emails. In. It's a, the speed dating site. How did you get his password to get in there? You it's, know a lot about this, It's just very, very easy to get into. There right. isn't, it's not like password protected. God, look at all these words. It sounds like the Matrix. Now, listen, all right, so you, anyway, the long and the tall is you've got this girl's number and you want yes. to confront her. Yeah? Yes. Well, I don't want, she's done nothing wrong. Ooh, bloody hell, leave her alone then, the poor cow. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you no, victimising her? I want her opinion. I want to know whether, you want her whether she did go on a date. Come on then, let's, let's Right, all right, it. fine. What's her name, this poor, innocent woman? It's Mary. Mary. Okay. Oh. Well, so we ring up Mary, find out what she's Did doing. Did she go on the date? Yes. Oh, what? Well, because you think the date may already have happened? <gasps> no, he right. said he didn't go on the date. Brilliant. Okay, we'll do it like detectives. You stay yeah. there. We'll get the number. Right. Right. Let's ring up Mary. Let's. Ring, if it's Mary, can we get Mary on the yeah, line? We, all right. But let's put a, let's put a song on. Right. You stay on the line. We'll ring up Mary. We'll soon. We'll get to the bottom of this case, won't we? This is a, <laughs> this is a big big break for us. Often we don't really help people. Sometimes we just shout things like, "Get your dogs to have oh, it." She's got to say, "Help." <laughs> uh, we're not helping unless you go help. Help. That's <laughs> like Lulu. It <laughs> was like Lulu. Lulu. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll listen to Morrissey singing Piccadilly Polare, and then when we come back, we'll do this morally dubious investigation. Can I point out? No. <laughs> <laughs> Let's listen to Piccadilly Polare. God knows what else she'll say. You're right, Trev. Very well indeed. You look troubled by something. Just what trying to work it? out what Polare Piccadilly meant. Uh, Piccadilly Pol- Polare is type of language, isn't it? And it's... apparently it's a rent boys colloquialism. Oh, that's what I thought. It's this. It's what they speak down in Piccadilly if they're a yeah. rent boy. Right. Hello, wouldn't mind a bit of how's your father type stuff, but it's, you know, there's a proper Polare. He's using some of it in there from what I gather, but I don't know about all that. Now, there's a person here called Nikki in Dundee. She's got an actual dilemma. It is this. She's fallen in love with someone who's married. Well, listen, young lady, just leave him alone. Yeah? Simple bit of advice. We've helped someone there. Unless you actually love him, then, you know, plough on and ruin the marriage. <laughs> there's two options. <laughs> now, um, we've got... So, where's that? Lindsay, are you still on the line, dear? Yes. Right. We couldn't get through. We've just been trying to ring that Mary. We can't get through to her. Oh, no! We've got Mary on the line. We've got her. Hello, Mary. Hi. 
Hi. Right, Lindsay, don't talk anymore. Mary, are you all right, dear? Um, I'm fine, a little nervous. Yeah, don't worry about that. Uh, <laughs> try not to worry about being nervous, you hussy! Now, uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, Russell, I'm off of this radio show called The Russell Brown Show. I'm here with my colleagues Matt Morgan and Trevor Locke. Also on the line is this person called Lindsay. Now, you don't need to know much about her yet. Now, Mary, what kind of a woman are you? You know, have you got any hobbies or anything? Um, just a normal person. Just a normal <laughs> person. Have you ever read, sometimes when you read after a spate of killings, the neighbours will talk about <laughs> the, the killer and they'll say, oh, he was a normal person, kept himself to himself, occasionally going on speed dates with other people's boyfriends. Mary, what have you been up to lately? Um, well, I, I did go on a speed date recently, I did. How fast was it? How's it going? Bloody hell, you're not attractive, come on, bedtime, ding ding! <laughs> <laughs> All my dates are conducted like that. <laughs> I'm just I'm surprised it took so long for the gimmick to take off. <laughs> um, so, okay, so you went on a speed date. For, for those of us who don't understand speed dates, what was it like? What happened? Um, well, it was very strange. You meet lots of people. and Where are you walking down? It sounds like the opening credits to the bill from <laughs> my childhood. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I'm outside a station. Okay, a police station. <laughs> what, a radio station or police station? Um, no, no tube. Ch tube, eh? Fair enough. OK, right, so, all right, so you went on this speed date and then what happened? Um, well, I just met um, quite a few people and spoke to them for a couple of minutes each and then yeah. I went home. All right. It, it, it sounds like a lie. Um, is there any, did went anyone stand? <laughs> I went home after. Oh. Did, uh, did anyone stand out on this speed dating thing you went out on? Uh, well, there, there are a few nice people I met. Name them. Uh, well, uh, first names. First names. Yeah, don't say their surnames, case it all gets. Yeah, well, hectic. no, I don't know them anyway. Oh God, you absolute <laughs> losing. <laughs> the way you live your life. <laughs> uh, well, no. I mean, I, well, I don't want, want to say really because it's all quite embarrassing. I'm sure. Oh, don't something be... you're going to tell me in a moment. No, we're going to resolve all this brilliantly. Uh, hold right. on, just one second, Mary. Wait, wait a minute. Lindsay? Yes? What's your boyfriend's name? Daniel. Right. Uh, right, you stay there again. Mary? <laughs> yeah? On this speed dating, was there a fella called Daniel? Handsome fella, lascivious, no morals, probably had an erection. <laughs> was I there? Think, I think there was somebody that I think I knew as Dan... So Dan. Dan. Daniel. Dan is short for Daniel. Brilliant in its intricacies. Yeah. <laughs> Call me Captain Dan. <laughs> OK, this Captain Dan, did he do anything odd, unusual, illegal? What was he like on the speed date? Um, I think he was one of the more normal ones, but then, right. there were a lot of weirdos. Fair enough. I'm not surprised Matt Morgan goes on them. I know the social demographic that he appeals to. Oh, now, let's, let's recreate that um, speed dating. I'll play the part of you. You play the part of Daniel so we can get an idea or Captain Dan or whatever his real name is. And uh, then we can work out how he's behaving. Right, I'm you. Right, right I suppose a bell goes or something, does it? Ding! Right, OK, speed dating away. I'll be you, Mary. Oh, hello, what's your name? You're Dan. Mary? Um, hi, I'm Dan. You vicious <laughs> pervert. <laughs> right, OK. Uh, oh, what are your interests? Um, oh, I can't remember what you said now. Right. Is he at this no, that's point... that's important. It's probably important what he said now. And did he try and lunge at you under the... Is there a desk? Did he no, lunge no, at... I think I think he was quite well behaved from what I remember. Mm. Did he do anything that stand out? No. Right. Oh, but really, then it was a while ago, right so I can't really remember. All right, well, it sounds to me like this... Dan, I mean, I don't want to jump to conclusions, right, and put my neck out here, but it sounds to me like Dan... Is the most dangerous criminal we've had in this country for some time. And oh he's got to be brought to justice. Um, we've got Lindsay on the phone, who's uh, like, uh, she's Dan's wife. Now, I don't know, they, <laughs> might, they might not be actually married, but they are in a sort of a, you know, they love each other or something. Oh, now, right, OK. Right, so, but like, this isn't Mary, you're not, let, let me make this very clear. You are not the criminal in all this. Dan right, okay. is the criminal. You are okay. a good, decent woman. I am indeed. Prowling round speed dates, breaking <laughs> hearts. <laughs> now, let's, let's have a... Oh, Lindsay? Yes? You said you wanted to get some opinions off of Mary. Yes. We've got her on the phone. Let's get some of these opinions. Go on then, dear. Okay. Uh, uh, Lindsay, get some, get some opinions off of Mary. Sure. Who I've worked out he's a lovely person, so don't be horrible to her. No, of course. There's absolutely no beef with Mary. Sounds very, very nice. Um, no beef, just... eh? Sounds kinky. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. If Go you on. want it to be Russell. Blimey, hello. But you're worse than your boyfriend. Go on, <laughs> ask these questions. Um, Mary. Yes? Did you actually go on a date with Daniel? Because I know there was sort of something arranged. No, no, I never actually met up with him. No. Um, was the date kind of arranged as part of a foursome or as just the two of you? No, well, there wasn't anything arranged. 
Um, um, she's he, he sent me a message via yeah. the website afterwards, but we never actually arranged to do anything. Okay, so you, you never went on a date with him, and did he? But did he? Um, was it like a dating? Was it definitely going to be a dating thing if it had, or was it a friendship thing? I don't know. He just said he just sent me a message saying, you know, how did how did you find the speed dated evening? Often and... when a pervert goes on a speed date, he's <laughs> looking for friendship. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was exactly. a box you could tick if you just wanted to be friends with somebody. Actually. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. My well, you point. might as well tick that box on your own inner thigh with a biro in your bed sit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, no, we, we never actually arranged to, to meet up, actually. Right. Hmm, so there is some truth in his claims, then. Some truth in You're a good <laughs> cop, aren't you? <laughs> I'm working for the FBI. Don't tell anyone. Blimey. Well, I think you've just blown your cover there. But, like, OK, so, all right, Mary, you... Uh, I think we released Mary now, pending <laughs> further inquiries. Mary, are you all right, dear? I'm OK. I'm, I'm slightly shocked that I've been called into this, but I'm OK. <laughs> <laughs> shocked, a bit Mary. embarrassed. Mary, don't blame yourself. It was never you. It was it's always okay. this It's this brute Dan. He's the one we've got, who's to blame for this, and by it's God, okay. we'll get him on I the think, line. I think I'm over it. Right, Mary, you're lovely. Now get on that tube, and for God's sake, don't break any more hearts. All right, <laughs> we'll see you I later. I like Mary. I, think I like Mary. Nice. I want Mary, not you. All right, you have Mary. I've got enough to worry about. Now, uh, Lindsay. Yes? How did you think those inquiries went? Yeah, well, I think... Do you believe I'm, her? I'm kind of disappointed. I was almost hoping that something was really wrong so I could really kind of hold him to rights on the radio. But, I've an idea. Let's know. assume Mary's lying and that they actually had full sex. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we assume that? Yes. Yes. Well, he's done something wrong. He's, something's going on oh, here. Yeah. You know what he's done wrong? He's so dull and boring that Mary couldn't even remember him. <laughs> What, what? Get true. a proper boyfriend from Glasgow. Why do you need to have one that's in London? Is Dan, no, perhaps well, Dan is Glaswegian and Dan here, perhaps on business, is he? No, I met him when he was in Glasgow at uni and um, we were just, you know, we decided to keep it going when he moved back. Okay. He's keeping his options open, travelling up and down the country. Yeah. Up and down, dirty <laughs> down, up and down he goes. <laughs> dirty down, no trousers on. <laughs> 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 Listen, all right, let's get Dirty Dan on the phone. <laughs> no, 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 yes. no, no. We're yeah. not getting Dan on the phone. So Lindsay, fair. we have got to get Dirty Dan on we're the phone. We're not getting Dan on the phone. We were only getting Call Dan, Dan Dirty on the phone. Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we not getting Dirty Dan on the phone, Lindsay? Because, because we were only ever going to get Dirty Dan on the phone if he was found out to be lying and he actually He's had been gone on captured. the date. Why is he going on speed dates? Oh, I went on a speed He's date with my wrong, mate. But you are a snooper. You are a what, snooper. I'm not a snooper. One of my friends was at the event and she told me that he was there. Lies. Shut Absolute up. lies and balder dash. Listen, you're a snooper. He's a... <laughs> <laughs> you're just a bloody a snooper and a pervert. You deserve <laughs> each other. Perfect I'm just... For each other. Sorry, Mary's got dragged into this poor, innocent Mary and now, thanks <laughs> to this inquiry, she's been brought to Matt Morgan's attention. <laughs> she'll, have her, she'll have him clamped to her throat before you know it. Right, OK then, so... um. Right, well, listen, in a way, this whole investigation's been conducted with all the dexterity of the Waco inquiry. <laughs> it's just caused carnage and unnecessary agony for everyone involved. Um, OK, so listen, Lindsay, do you feel, at least you feel satiated that um, Dirty Dan's, if he is having an affair, he's at least conducting it in a clandestine manner, which is acceptable to you? Oh, yeah? completely acceptable. Brilliant. I'm doing exactly the same. <laughs> You're having an affair as well? No, I'm not. Have, no. uh, have an affair, Lindsay. I should have an affair. Why not? Fact, well, what, what about Trevor? Is Trevor free? No, yeah, he's tre- not. He doesn't live in Glasgow. Tre- <laughs> you, Trevor, Trevor, you are Trevor. Himself. You are Trevor. Sometimes I'm Trevor. And Sometimes I'm... Sometimes he calls himself Little Lulabelle. <laughs> <laughs> and wears the garter belts. You need to have somebody in Glasgow, or have you got a psychological tick which means you can only go out with people who are in London? So that you well, can be I suspicious. Well, I might be moving to London, so I'm just keeping my options open that way. <laughs> You're worse than Dirty Dan. Get I down am. here. Up and down, up and down. <laughs> All right, Lindsay. Well, it's lovely. Sean <laughs> O'Groats to Land's End. <laughs> you filthy pair of perverts. Lindsay, it's been a pleasure squandering our lives together. We'll Excellent. talk to you a little bit later. So, um, hmm, what do you think what was right what we just done just then with that Mary and Lindsay and Dirty Dan? Yeah. Well, wasn't it? We've reached some truth. Um, Apparently, though, uh, young Michael's been talking out there to Dirty Dan himself and he said he hung up the phone and the relationship's been really badly damaged by all this. Really? Yeah, it has, in a, in a way, but I suppose that's... How? How does Dan Well, know I think that... Dirty Dan now feels embarrassed and angry.
Like, yeah. but I suppose he's been exposed, hasn't he? He's been exposed. He's been exposed going up and down the country. <laughs> dirty, dirty, <laughs> dirty. <his> nightgown. <laughs> like a wee willy winky, but with an erection. <laughs> dirty little devil speed dating. I don't know. So remember earlier on in the show when we were talking to uh, that fella Kieran and his wife Janet and they had their dogs called things like... Bob and Louise, <laughs> and they were having it off in the garden, and the dog didn't want to do it because he, he says the dog's gay. Yes. We've gone back on the phone for updates. We find out what's going on. Let's get in there. Let's get in there, baby. Kieran, is he, are you there, mate? I'm here. Kieran, has there been, have you tried any of the advice we give you? Yep, we even tried chalk drops and it didn't work. <laughs> chalk drops? No one mentioned that. I never said that. Where did you get chalk drops from? No one mentioned chalk drops. <laughs> They're uh, pets for pets, you know, we try putting them around our. Oh, oh no. no, Kieran, you sexy, <laughs> you sexy devils! You put. Are, are you seriously telling us that you, you put you chalk the drops? Back of your pants. You still haven't explained that yet. What's that? I tried for my, Listen, that was legitimate. I, uh, a bit on the back of your pants? How do you get trifle on the back of your pants? <laughs> if you've got an eventful life, sometimes you will find trifle on the back of your pants. I got into a quarrel in the custard factory. <laughs> now, listen, you. I want to know a little bit more about you framing a dog's vagina <laughs> with chalk drops. I didn't put them on her, her butt, so sort of put them on her oh. above her tail to try and tease them over, you know? Yeah, but like, hold on, if you're a dog and you're eating chalk drops off another dog's back, you're not going to have a... Right, I've had my chalk drops. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time for a sex party. It's not oral sex you're trying to get the dogs to do. Yeah, I mean, listen, what are you, what are you trying to get your dogs to do? Why don't you just dress them up in ball gowns <laughs> and make them go you're for an evening with in Prague? animals wearing clothes. Am I? I sent you a picture. Did you get it there? What's that? You've seen the picture. I sent you over a picture. Yeah, actually, yeah, you did. We'll put this up on the website. Here's yeah, a picture. Oh, hold on. They're just kind of not that interested. They're just graphic. laying there. They're not having it off at all. They're looking in completely opposite directions. I'm showing Matt and Trevor now. There's two boxer dogs. One look one way, one look other way. Like that being good fellas, where there's a paint and the two dogs. They're not dogs. They're the, 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 uh, the big one is the, is the boy dog. The big one's the boy dog. He is the they're big not... boy, isn't he? He looks pretty excited about something. Well, they call him Big Ben. You call him Big Ben? <laughs> He's having a one-man lipstick party, isn't he? On his own there. Lovely little fella. So. Okay, so didn't you try Matt's technique of no, putting boy pants. yeah, putting boys' pants on on the girls' I back? Yeah, I think that's illegal, isn't it? <laughs> Sounds like a lot of fun. A lot of things are illegal. I like this laughter in the background. As long as you don't get caught. Janet. Is it, what's Janet think about all this? She seems like the chuckling puppeteer behind all this, the Lady <laughs> Macbeth behind this dog oh, sex oh, compound. Yeah, what kind of hairspray do you use? <laughs> I don't use any in sex, you perverts. <laughs> Certainly not in dog sex. It's a ridiculous way to carry on and live your lives. Preposterous. Yeah, so, it's not happening. I don't think he's laying down in front of the fire and he's just kind of hmm. you know, mulling it over, you know. He might be shy. You've got to leave him to it. Let, Go away uh-huh. for the weekend. Yeah, that's true. Because you know sometimes how a dog or a cat may look embarrassed when it's doing a poo. Like mm. my cat, it just looks, it tries to pretend it ain't doing it. Yep. Is it, it embarrassed or? Yeah, well, it tries the front. It tries to get the front end to look detached from the back end. Go, I don't know what's going on around <laughs> there, <laughs> but I must say I'm quite. Sure. Would you care, care for Ferrero Rocher? There's some awful business happening around the rear, <laughs> <laughs> and the, the two are entirely Why unrelated. Why are you watching it? <laughs> no, no, we leave them do it in the backyard, but don't actually look at them. You, know? <laughs> you well, are looking at them. Yeah, we video it and put it on the internet, you know? Public porn. Oh, oh no, oh, mate. God. Porn for dogs. Oh. Perhaps that'd help him, though. Perhaps yeah, if you would show him. You know, I could do a puppy porn, like, you know, maybe get him going. Can you stop saying puppy porn? Yeah. I don't mind you making porn with animals in it, but I'd like them to be above the age of consent. Come on. <laughs> what is the age of consent for dogs? I don't know. Well, seven 18 years, in dog years. Eighteen in dog years. Yeah, or sixteen in dog well, years. Well, you're not supposed to breed a, a, a bitch dog until she's over two years old. You know. I won't have that sort of language. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the Westwood show. Mature, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you want us to do now? Drop bombs and that, and give shout outs. Come on, <laughs> you dirty devil. Right. Okay. Well, listen. It seems to me we're no closer to coaxing that dog in uh, having it off with the other one they're just laying there all peaceful yeah it's just not happening though. in a way that's more romantic trev what was you going to say i'd darling? just like to ask kieran this uh, kieran do you do their voices for them do you do you um give the dogs voices like as in like pet voices and talking to them and stuff yeah no, like so that they can talk no but do you what trevor's saying right not do you have a voice with which you address the dogs but do you anthropomorphize the dog by going oh hello i'm ben i fancy boy dog not girl dog that's what that's no 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 that, that, that just 
too weird. <laughs> no, no one does that except Trevor. <laughs> that's, that's why. No, people do do it. And you, I, I think, think you give Trevor a hard time. I, I actually like Trevor. I've been listening to the show for the last couple of weeks now, and Trevor seems an okay guy. He's thank not, you, mate. Thank you. Well, when people is... say I like someone, they have to go, I actually, I actually, I actually like, like Trevor. I actually like oh, Vinegar. <laughs> the card thing's a bit weird, but I think it's okay. <laughs> Try Vinegar's it. a nice drink. <laughs> mm, if you make it fizzy in a soda stream, you can drink it all day. <laughs> Trevor, he's not a nice man. He is an unforgivable character. If you were to see him now, He's eating salad eating with his bare hands. Two hours. Horrible. He just sits stuffing himself. Well, Kieran. why not? If you can get away with it, why not? Well, I can get away with it. And I yes. now listen. I want you to talk Look to pointing like Mussolini talk to Ria, Ria. In the, uh, but, but pretend to be Ben. Get yourself inside. Oh, Trevor! Oh, that's that's enough. Weird. Stop it, Trevor. We're trying to get away from that kind of show. You've just tried to coax <laughs> a man inside of a dog. Is get inside his mind. I was going to say, but you wouldn't let me finish. Get inside his mind. I won't talk. let you finish. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to Working Rhea as if you're Ben and get your lady wife to do Rhea's voice and get them to chat to each other. Trevor, that's what, what I did when Bessie w wouldn't have a go with Mr. Whiskey. That's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Whiskey is actually it's Trevor's BBC father really <laughs> and Bessie is a Dachshund. That is what's most disturbing about this story. <laughs> Bessie, for some reason, didn't want to have sex with Mr. Whiskey <laughs> Stroke <laughs> Lock. <laughs> What is going on? Listen, this is not right, what's going I'm on here. I'm confused. Right, listen, Ben, not a Ben's the dog, Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably get more sense out of Ben. At least he's got the dignity not to have sex with people outside of his sexual preference bracket. I don't know, I think that you, if that dog's gay, you're just going to just have to leave him alone. Just a pink collar then? Just if you want, mate, but I think that might be uh, wrong to say that. <laughs> like, let him wear what he wants. Let him, if he wants to have it off with other gay dogs, then, you know, go to it. Let him, let him have it. All right, lad. You maybe know. he's just religious. Maybe, yeah, maybe he's just not into that sort of thing. Maybe he's sort of an asexual dog. Or a Christian. Know. Could be a Christian. Could be, couldn't he? Could be a Christian dog. He could have a whole lot of belief systems going <laughs> on in that Give him to a priest. dog mind. Give him to a priest. Yeah. No, we don't want to do that. They love him, don't they? You love Ben, don't you, mate? Yes. Why not? Okay then, so uh, thanks for being on our radio programme. We've enjoyed it enormously. No problem, bud. We're terrified what you're up to with those hounds. <laughs> okay, send us, we'll keep sending us pictures. No, yeah, you, eat them. Eat, you know, dog's chocolates. Eat some dog's chocolates. See what it's like. They're horrible, I've tried. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it, you lunatics. <laughs> We're talking to people that sit stuffing dog's chocolates. They're not very chocolatey, are they? No, they're horrible. They really just don't really taste of chocolate. They don't well, taste of chocolate. Nice. Right, okay, this sounds like a mental breakdown now. <laughs> Look, you, Kieran, go back to your wife. Trevor, okay. stop speaking. Right, no, everyone stop eating dog's chocolates. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd have to say that on the wireless. <laughs> I was saying the star giving free curry to every reader. Next to a picture of Shilpa, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, is that an that advancement? White trash comment. That's not, white trash isn't a racist statement. Not really, and I think it's there's not equality between black or people of colour making like uh, racially derived comments about white people because it's not the history of colonisation and no, slavery, is there? So I don't think you can say that. Well, you what? can. You can. Say it's not that. the same, is it? Like saying white but trash. White is trash not the same is, a, as, is like a an accepted sort of two-word thing. It's not yeah. like going, white idiot. Yeah, but <clears throat> I just think it's still not a two-way street anyway because the, you, you, yeah, you can't ignore history, can you? Bloody great big thing looming about, ruining school. Right then, <laughs> Sharon, is that the smell of that salad? Our friend Sharon's coming here, took our sh uh, shoe off and, and I can't tell if this vile stink is her shoe or Trevor's dinner. It's Trevor's dinner. It's not my smell dinner. like that since he opened his dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor shouldn't no. even open dinner. <laughs> Trevor keeps dinner in his pocket. It's been a ch I don't know how he's carrying this stuff. He gets it all in it. He's got f he had fruit first, then his dinner. Trevor, you've had about nine courses in here. You told me to have my fruit first. You said I'd just do it quicker. I did just do it quicker. <laughs> I didn't speak like a dolphin, though, when I said it. That's not how a dolphin speaks. <laughs> they do squeaks. <laughs> they do squeak. Clicks and whistles. Right, right OK, on. it's Noel Gallagher on the phone. No, Gallagher, what's going on? We'll ring him on my mobile phone. He'll soon be here. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's been a good show, isn't it? We helped them dog people enough, I thought. <laughs> well, they didn't get their problem solved, really. Didn't they? Well, they wanted the dog to make love. Well, in a way. But it only had sex. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps it was too complex. Perhaps it's too much to ask a dog to make love. It's, it's, a, it's quite a big ask, isn't it, really? No, I, I, hello, Noel Gallagher. Oh. It's Russell Brand. No, what are these sounds? Noel. Hello? Noel, it's Russell. Yes, I know. Are you all right? <laughs> yes, I am all right. No, we're going to call you now in a more conventional way, because at the moment I'm, uh, we're, we're on radio and I'm holding a mobile phone up to the microphone, so don't say anything oh, call, weird. Call me, call me home in Buckingham 
Shire. All right, then I'll call you in what you call your country pile. Bye, you yeah. forgot your roots. Talk to you in a minute, then. <laughs> See ya. Bye. I love you. Bye. <laughs> right, there's Noel Gallagher. We'll be ringing him up in his country pile in Buckinghamshire. Apparently, I read it in... Um, a newspaper renowned for being stuffed with silly lies that um, Liam had said, like, uh, like, oh, oh, Russell Brand, oh, oh. tosser, I think. <laughs> I think, <laughs> I think is what it culminated in. Hold on, sorry. Hello? Noel, it's Russell. Hello, dear. Hello. You all right, mate? Yeah. How have you been? What's going on? Uh, what do you mean, what's going on? Well, did you, I read something in the start the other day about you, who you call your kid, Liam Gallagher, the pop singer, was just saying, uh, saying things about me that learnt my feelings. Do you think yeah, Liam was? Yeah, apparently, uh, well, apparently he was in a beauty salon in North London, getting his, I don't know, having some form of ablutions. Yeah, his bikini wife. Having his bikini lying down. Yeah. And, uh, and he said something like, he said something like, cool, like, he said a few things, but like, I think, you know, like our newspapers make things sound, sound much worse than they actually are, catastrophise things and try yeah. and create t tension and hatred so none of us yeah. are ever happy. Well, I think that it ultimately he may have said that I'm a tosser. He might not have done. <laughs> but you may have done. Uh, are we on the radio now? Yeah, this is actual radio. <laughs> oh, right, okay. um, I don't think you would have said that. Oh, do you on. think he might have? have been a different answer if we weren't uh, on the radio? Good point, yeah. Matt. Uh, well, he's, uh, he's, never, he's never said anything to me when, I've, when your name's come up in, in rehearsals. Is it ever, in rehearsals? I'm glad my name comes up. We were rehearsing the other day and uh, he'd read in uh, you know, that Brits magazine. Yeah. I was in an interview with you where apparently... Yeah. I call your radio show every Saturday. Yeah, well, you yeah. plague us with phone calls. I sit at home <laughs> and I think, hmm. Yeah. I'm going to give Russell a bell, actually. Listen, <laughs> yeah, what I want to know I'll is do. why you're just. Is it, in fact, the exact opposite of that? It's the exact opposite of that. Yeah. We call you up because you're an important and adored member yeah, of maybe public you think life. He's a tosser for that, but then again, he wouldn't be the only one, would he? Oh! And anyway, and he said in that magazine that me and you have an ongoing war of words, which we. <laughs> Which we kind of backed out every Saturday. That's not true, is it? We're, Seems we're to be one now. You've been very aggressive. <laughs> I'm not. Except I was able to detect that you talk about me in rehearsals. Are you dedicating a song to me, Noel? <laughs> is that what this is we're about? Doing, we're doing a special <laughs> effeminate dandy medley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bring, bring me sunshine, I think we're doing at the end. That'd and be lovely. We're, we're, we're hoping you'll do both Morecambe and Wise's dance. It'll be bring me sunshine. <laughs> It'll be lovely. I think that'd like to brighten up the Brits no end. Will you find out if he said that? Because it's uh, you know me, I'm vulnerable and sensitive. It's hurt me feelings. Well, I uh, yeah, I'll ask it. I'll ask him when I'll ask him when I see him on Monday. But I don't. I know. I know he doesn't dislike you. Oh, that's nice. It's nice <laughs> that he's not actively trying to destroy me. Yeah, no, he wouldn't do that. No, I, I, in fact, I think he. I'm, no, I've I've heard him say I've heard him say complimentary things about you. Good, because when I met him, he was very nice. He came very near to my face with his big charismatic head. And right. sort of like it was all sort of like it was like all right, all right. Yeah, but hang on a minute. So you above all other people should know that what's ever written in those tabloid papers is it's very, 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 very far from the truth. It is, isn't it? It's seldom true. Normally, no, it's balderdash. Didn't, didn't you? Didn't you used to read out said things about yourself to me? Yes. Yeah, uh, every Sunday morning. Yes, that's true. That's true. But I just well, thought I'd should, check. Well, you should know better, really, shouldn't you? Yeah, I shouldn't be so vulnerable, should no, I? No, not at all. I know, I know. Well, that's, of course, he does blow you. <laughs> in that case, then really should. Christ, well, we'll get to the bottom of it anyway. So uh, you're going to come. Uh, we've asked. I've asked you them things, and I to come to this. You're going to come to this uh, charity do to raise money for Focus Twelve. Uh, I, like I've not already raised enough, but yeah, you're going to squeeze another few quid out. <laughs> of <it somehow. laughs> he raised eighty delicious grand with his talent. I've, did he? Yeah, he did. Wow. Uh, yeah. For like, for Focus Twelve when we did that uh, thing at Coco. And and, and 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 was present at somebody being proposed to on stage. Oh yeah, this bloke oh, yeah. That said he would donate another ten grand if he could propose Noel in front of it. Noel. Yeah, and then Noel. It was all going to be a big surprise, and Noel goes to the woman who was going to be proposed to. He goes, oh, it's good, this proposal, isn't it? <laughs> Ruined the whole surprise. No, you know, he, he, no, what happened is he come up and he said, this is my uh, whatever his girlfriend. I said, oh, <laughs> are you the bird who's been proposed to? Yeah. And she kind of, she went, what? And I was like, ah. Yeah, you ballsed it right up, but you know, I think it still was the happiest night. It was actually, you know, that's really surprised me because when that proposal happened on stage, I thought the baying mob of fans that you bought, I thought that, oh, it'll be a roughly a 50 50 split. It'll be like some people that are there for Oasis, and then there'll be some delicate shoegazing types that have come to hear my nuanced poetry. It was not like that. <laughs> <laughs> the screaming, yeah, Oasis, yeah, yeah. no. no, when I came out, I was considered an inconvenience <laughs> to twist. Twittering across the stage. You don't well though, but I don't, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to this charity dinner. Yeah, we donate some stuff to be auctioned off, please. I'm going to, I'm going to, I, 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna dig out a, um, a, one of those disc things that you get for selling lots of records. I'm gonna dig out one of them. I'll find one from somewhere. Can we have a guitar as well, please? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, a lovely one. No. You know, a broken one. Yeah, smash one up. We could, I'll tell you what we could do. I'll buy a guitar, then you go, I'll use this at Nebworth, and then we'll just auction it off. <laughs> this is got, obviously, you're going to edit this bit out. No, nope, right? we're going to let that go live yeah. out. Well, because that's he was, he, Matt, he was saying to me the other time on the phone, he was going, Can we get a guitar? And I was like, No, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not auctioning them off. And he said, Well, what if we get one and say that it, say that it's like, well, you can't lie. Is that you saying that to him? Yeah, I did. Yeah, like, you can't awesome. have some kid paying, what, like five grand on the night and then, you know, it eventually coming out that, you know he bought that on Denmark Street last week. Didn't yeah, but it still would have Noel Gallagher written on exactly. it. That's What's enough for me. Now, it's all right, so you won't join me in my fraudulent scam. You no. will talk to your brother uh, and make sure that he loves me and everything's going to be all right for the Brits. Is there anything else we should be talking about? Oh, yeah, do you love meerkats, as has been recently published in the press? <sighs> well, again, you know how you say things in interviews and then they take the minutest thing and make the biggest story out of it. Mm. I have been known to sit and have a gander at that meerkat manor, which... <laughs> I watched that the other day. Yeah, I've, I've seen it, and it is very, very interesting, but the way it's portrayed in the sun is like, I'll kind of clear the house at 10 to 5 on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Say, uh, like, shut it now, the meerkats are on. Is it on at 10 to 5? They made it, you do know the time it's on as well, Noel, and they made it very clear that there was a sexual element to your enjoyment of that meerkat manor. <laughs> they said you sit there <laughs> what, fully what? nude. <laughs> <laughs> and that you mime little meerkat moves with meerkat. your girlfriend Sarah. No, meerkat that, man is no, stupid. No, see, that's from your warped, ridiculous mind. It's not, no. They, yes, they, it is. That's your actual sex life is like the sex life of a meerkat. No, it's not. It's from your warped, ridiculous... <laughs> Not, not from you. Hogwash! It's no. true truth. Go on, Matt, what are you going to say? Meerkat Manor, they, they, they're called things like Shakespeare, and mm. they just make up stories. They go, Shakespeare's annoyed because gypsies walked off. They just make up a whole soap did you opera. Ever, did did you lie. ever see the one where one of the meerkats was sleeping around with another gang of meerkats? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what? You know, I mean, I, I was kind of fascinated when I watched that the first time. I was thinking, but how do they know that? Well, how do they know that that meerkat's hanging make... off with another one? Yeah, well, if Matt's saying that they now make up a story... They get to, footage uh, and then go, oh, that looks makes a lot like... More sense to me. Yeah. Right, so they just apply things retrospectively. Uh, not, unlike, not unlike the tabloids. Oh, I see, yeah, Very meerkat similar. manner. So if they then poor meerkats, the, the meerkat loomed over another meerkat and touched it on its ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, really, they're just it's innocent play. All right, then, look, we should probably go, because our radio show's nearly finished now, even right, though it's did you not want me for anything in particular, then? Was that, was that just it? No, we just talked to you, because, you, you know, <laughs> we bring value to the show. We love you very much. We miss you. We've asked you about, you know, about uh, Liam, about Meerkat Manor. We've cleared up some important <laughs> matters. You know, now I feel we can move on, unless, unless you've got something particular to add. Let's... Um, let me see. Has anything knocked me this week? Not, not, not that. I just, usually when you say this, I usually put the phone on and go, bye. Yeah, no, because you're... Jingo. <laughs> By Jingo. Yeah. By Jove, I should have included that anecdote. Because all your anecdotes have got, either got swearing in them or they're sort of inappropriate yeah. crimes. <laughs> yeah, we've got... Um, yeah, I mean, if this, if this radio show was later and not on BBC Radio 2, it'd be great. Yeah, it? if it was muttered in a corridor in strange ways, it would still hey, raise eyebrows. You... So, I, I take it you're gigging tonight, then? Yeah, I am. Going down Southampton. Oh. Yeah, it's going to be a wonderful space. It's all sold out already. That's why the, this has had to be pre recorded. Ooh, it's all sold out already. Wow. I <laughs> will <laughs> okay. oh, see. experience, I yeah. take it, innit? Hey, listen, all them gigs are sold out. All oh, the what gigs? All oh, my tour. My tour's all that was sold last out. Year. Yeah, I'm doing another tour, aren't I? The tour continues. I'm still touring. Right. Are okay. you still doing the same? Yeah, no, there's, a, there's lots of new and exciting material uh, really? that I'd recommend to anyone, though. Yeah, I would, as a matter of fact. You come along. Unlike your gig for the a Teenage Cancer Trust, which is <laughs> hey, taking out no, months to sell out. out. in four minutes flat, matey. Did it? Four minutes flat. They're two nights. Not, not you one, not like you. You and Watts' face from the mighty whatever its name is. Me and Noel Fielding. Uh, tickets are going very well there. Mine have gone. People are panic buying your tickets, Noel, because they're thinking, well, let's watch the final last gasps <laughs> of this great artist. Whereas with me, people think, we've got, we've got ages to watch him evolve, <laughs> this young man. Yeah. There you oh, are. Oh, well, it must be tough for you, I've got to say that. Yeah, it's been a real struggle. Now, listen, we better go, because this radio show's over now. No, 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 come on, let's squeeze another 30 seconds out of it. Stop it! Why is it so difficult? You're like a... You well, are brilliant. I've got to watch Sarah watch the rugby, right, and Scotland are winning.
Oh, really? What, you say you're trying to use this to protect you from a relationship, which, frankly, you're lucky to be in with a woman who's too good looking for you? Listen, if she's out of my league, where does she stand in your league? Just mid-table. Not even playing your sport. (laughs) (laughs) No, I know. Right, and on that, I'll leave you to it. All right, enjoy the rugby. Yes, enjoy dying on your ass tonight. (laughs) See you later, you've lost touch with your roots. Bye, then. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. There he goes, Noel Gallagher there. Right, the show's nearly over. Let's wrap it up with a bit of Poetry from our poet laureate. Why, it's Mr. G. This is called A Poem from the Future. Many years ago, I met this old fellow. He seemed strained and mystical, but his demeanour kind of mellow. He told me that his name was Mr. G, and he used to write poetry for one of the craziest radio shows known across the country. He spoke about pimping gay canines and about the power of the rakefish in her armpit swimming by. And he smiled as he thought of cyborgs who sleep talk and mice needing to be caught. And times were fraught with speed dating triangles, hearts were in tangles and Dan's plans were mangled. So I had to ask this old man, who in the hell presented this mad show? He smiled and said the host was Russell Brand, a.k.a. Horatio. Woohoo, yes! What an excellent poem! It makes you realise how good our radio show is, all them things actually happened well a good bit of radio that Brilliant. was thanks for listening to it only time now to thank Matt Morgan thanks Matt Morgan you alright did you enjoy it yes Trevor did you enjoy it yes I did enjoy it stinking the place out thank you everyone who's contributed thanks for all your calls remember uh, email russell.brand at bbc.co.uk and leave us your phone number because we need to store up a good database of phone calls for when we're pre-recording shows they're a bit of like housekeeping at the end now it's time for a little show called the news which will have the word what word should we get into the dog's news. chocolates dog chocolates <laughs> say dog's chocolates otherwise the news will be moribund and redundant 88 to 91 fm this is radio 2 from the bbc bbc radio 2 russell brand <laughs>